The law of Moses, Christ's teachings, and the Apostle Paul all agree, or so believes Mr. Peacekey. But some of my thoughts are based on the Dead Sea Scrolls, archaeology, and an old Hebrew text of Matthew. Christianity as a whole has been plagued by wicked, hyper-religious dogma. Nowhere in it are the following things condemned as being wicked. Doctor visits and taking medicine, nor is good food or drinking intoxicating drinks, such as wine. The making of beer or grain wine was just a down-to-earth situation. Where it is said to cast your bread upon the water and not many days hence it will come back to you is probably a reference to making beer. Putting bread in water is how you make it, and this was common. Nice clothing, jewelry, dancing, celebrations at marriages, and music are all biblical. Now before I go on, I need to clarify something connected to this. Self-discipline and moderation are the key. Control your desires. Now we need to get it in our heads that God is a God of love. He is merciful and just. He is not into giving us laws that are inhuman or hurtful. That is what carnal thinking men do. Create nonsensical laws as a way of getting control. They promote superstition and mythology, untold numbers of things that are no more than improper or crude are taught as being wicked. Talk to a foreign missionary about weirdness. Even some things that are just forms of everyday normal expressions of life are demonized. The use of hyperbole in the Bible is denied, and if you ever use it around some religious zealots, you will be condemned to hell by them. Now to the subject. Disobe disobeying God is the problem. What shall we say then? Should we continue to live in sin so that God's grace will increase? Certainly not. We have died to sin. How then can we go on living in it? This is Apostle Paul in Romans 6, 1 to 2. And remember, he is called the Apostle of Grace. He goes on. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. This is Romans 6, 14 to 15. But you, Moses, stay here with me, and I will give you all my laws and commands. Teach them to the people so that they will obey them in the land that I am giving them. People of Israel, be sure that you do everything that the Lord your God has commanded you. Do not disobey any of his laws. Obey them all so that everything will go well with you and so that you will continue to live in the land that you are going to occupy. Now this is God to Moses in Deuteronomy 5, 31 to 33. Remember, he said, so it will go well with you. Now here's Jesus. He said, didn't Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keep the law? Why do you want to kill me? That's in John 7, 19. He goes on. How can you believe who receive glory one of another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Think not that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, on whom you have set your hope. For if ye believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, 
How shall you believe my words? John 5, 44 to 47. Now here's Apostle Paul. For all races and nations have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, can now be justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to show his righteousness because of the passing over of the sins done a time. Now in the forbearance of God, for the showing, I say, of his righteousness at this present season, that he might himself be just and the justifier of him that hath faith in Jesus. Now notice that he's talking this happened to, and it was going to take care of those sins that had been passed over before in the Old Testament under the old system. He goes on, where then is the glorifying? Is it excluded? Well, by what manner of law? A law of works? Nay, by a law of faith. We reckon therefore that a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Or is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of Gentiles also? Yea, of Gentiles also. If so be that God is one, and he shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. No one, here I'm adding this, no one can earn their salvation. It has to come through faith. And the Jews were trying to do that very thing. And they thought because they were of Abraham, uh, that gave them an inside avenue. They were wrong. Now, all theologians agree with the Apostle Paul up to this point, but he goes on. Do we then make the law of none effect through faith? Now, I'm going to read that again. Because of all this grace and faith, uh, being saved through Christ, is it now are we making the law of none effect through that faith? He said, God forbid, no way. We establish the law. That's how we have to live, is by projecting the law. We are living epistles and seen and read of all men. We can't be saved by trying to obey it. We have to have faith. But once we walk in faith, we end up establishing the law. That's Apostle Paul, the Apostle of Grace in Romans 3, 23 to 31. Here he is again. Do you not know that to whatsoever you present yourself as obedient slaves to, you are then slaves to what you obey, whether of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness? But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves of sin, you then obeyed from your heart the form of doctrine that is de delivered to you, and now, being freed from sin, you became enslaved to righteousness. Romans 6, 16 to 18. We used to be slaves to sin, but then through faith and by believing in the doctrine that was preached by Paul and Moses and Christ, we have been freed from sin, and now we are enslaved to righteousness. Don't fool yourselves. No one who is immoral or worships idols or is unfaithful in marriage or is a pervert or behaves like a homosexual will share in God's kingdom. Neither will any thief or greedy person or drunkard or anyone who curses and cheats others. 
Some of you used to be like that. Let me read that again. Some of you used to be like that. But now the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and the power of God's Spirit have washed you and made you holy and acceptable to God. Some of you say, well, we can do anything we want to. But I tell you that not everything is good for us. So I refuse to let anything have power over me. That's Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 12. He said, you used to be like that. They said, oh yeah, but we got all this freedom in Christ. He said, I will not let anything have power over me. In other words, we are to control ourselves, our own desires. Paul said, we beat his body into subjection every day. Apostle Paul speaks plainly. You also say, food is meant for our bodies and our bodies are meant for food. But I tell you that God will destroy them both. We are not supposed to do indecent things with our bodies. We are to use them for the Lord who is in charge of our bodies. 1 Corinthians 6.13 He is very plain. We are to obey God. Basic common sense. The law of Moses is not in contention with Christ's or Apostle Paul's messages, but it is rather their foundation. Gnosticism has infected Judaism or Phariseeism, and their evil influences are found in many areas of popular Christian doctrines. Judaism relies on their oral law. There was two laws, they said. One was the, the written law that, Paul, that Moses put down, but the other one was an oral law, and it's above the written law. That's what they teach. Now, Christ is our example and we are to walk like he walked, relative to morality, no excuses. Now this is based on an old Hebrew text. You will not find this in any translations that I have, and I have numbers of them, and it's not in there. It's not said like this. Then Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, the scribes and the Pharisees set on Moses' seat. All things, therefore, whatsoever he bid you, these do and observe. But do not ye after the works of the Pharisees, for they say and do not. Matthew 23, 1-3. Notice, whatsoever Moses bid you, these do and observe. That's the intent of that passage, and it's been missed in all translations practically since that time. The problem is the, uh, the original Hebrew word there and the Greek word look very similar. Today we have many oral laws untold numbers of hyper-religious laws have been created out of whole cloth down through the ages or since the time of Christ and they have placed heavy, wicked, nonsensical burdens on Christians. In doing this, the good news has been undermined. It is now said this world is going to be destroyed in order to get rid of sin. That's not the problem. This earth is not evil. Neither are babies. Disobedient people are the problem. Christians can obey God. Now that charge is in keeping with common sense and is a very reasonable, down-to-earth challenge that everyone can meet. Now in talking to ministers ever so often, Boy, they act like it's really hard to obey God. Jesus said his yoke was easy and his burden is light. And if you need rest, come to him. Well, this is the end of this presentation. God bless.